Okay. And for this part, we want to see how we determine the relative extrema of a given surface. Now, when you're trying to get the relative extrema, all you're trying to do here is that you want to find the partials. You see, at that or at an extreme point or a critical point, what you expect to see is that the partial of that function with respect to x has to be equals to zero. So partial f or partial derivative of f with respect to x at a specific point, let's say um, you are dealing with a specific point a comma b, the partial derivative of the function f with respect to x at a comma b, if indeed a comma b is an extreme point, then this has to be equals to zero. In the same way, partial f partial y at the same point a comma b, if it is indeed an uh, extreme point, then even this has to be equals to zero. Now, with this in mind, how do we then evaluate questions when we're given this? Well, most questions will not give you what A and B, what it is, what they are, what the point is. Instead, they want you to find it. Like, for example, the way this question is expressed here. In this question, they want us to find the relative extrema, meaning they want us to find exactly what this point A comma B is. They are guaranteeing that this point has to be an extreme point or a critical point, meaning it has to satisfy these two conditions. Now, with that in mind, how are we going to find what that point is? Well, we just have to lay our equation down and see how it is going to come out. Now, how do we proceed? Well, in this case, first get your expression of f. We have f of x comma y. And this equation or this expression is given as x to the power four plus y to the power four minus four. And then we have x, y and plus one. Now, according to how we described these critical points, for a point to be critical, the partial derivatives have to be equals to zero uh, respectively. So meaning when I get partial f partial x, it has to be equals to zero. How would I get, or what will be partial f partial x? This is going to be four x to the power three, and then this will be zero. This will reduce to just minus four y, and that will be zero the other side. So this is partial f partial x. So if this is, if x and y, or the, if we're dealing with an extreme point, this has to be equals to zero. Next up, or in the same way, when we get partial f partial y at an extreme point, it has to be equals to zero. Let's get partial f partial y. Now this will be zero when you get the derivative of that y to the power four, we'll get four y to the power three. Then the other part, this part with respect to y, we'll now get minus four x. This is what will be equals to zero. Now, all we have to do is work out these two equations as a system of equations to figure out what x and y are going to be. Now, to solve this, all we have to do is make, uh, let's make a y subject in the first one, meaning from the first equation, firstly, for both equations, notice that uh, four can cancel out, meaning that from the one on top, the one down, I mean, let's say from the one on top, we can make y the subject by just saying y is equals to x to the power three. I just move this to the right side, making it positive. Once we have that, we can now plug it into the second equation so that the second equation becomes y to the power three minus where we have x, we now have, sorry, it's where we have y, where we are plugging in. So y is to the power three, but where there's y, we're putting x to the power three, so it's x to the power three that is going to the power three. Okay. And this we have minus, minus x. Okay, I'm wondering why I have this to the power three, but I think that was okay. That is this squared. So this is going to be minus that. Okay, that's okay. So once we have this, what else are we going to have here? then this is going to be x, just x, and this is equals to zero. So three to the power three, what would that be?
Nine. Nine. Of course, these will just multiply. Don't think that the other three is raised to the power three. The three and the three will multiply to give us x to the power nine minus x is equals to zero. From here, solving this, this factor out x once, you get x to the power eight now. Then we have minus one is equals to zero. Don't make a mistake of dividing out, you start losing values there. So the first value of x comes out as x here possibly will be equals to zero or x to the power eight minus one is equals to zero. So this is what we have. Already we have a candidate for an extreme point when x is equals to zero. And clearly when x is equals to zero when you plug it here, y comes out as zero as well. So one critical point has come out and this is zero comma zero. They wanted us to find these extreme points, relative extrema, and we have just found the first one. What else will be there? So we now have to simplify this expression. There are a number of ways you can simplify this expression. And usually when you have an expression raised to the power whose highest power is eight, you expect it to have eight possible solutions. But let's see how this reduces to only two viable solutions. Well, you can rewrite this expression so that you have x to the power four, but the whole term squared, then minus one. When you have this, you can now consider this a difference of two squares. So that now you can have x to the power four minus one, and then you have x to the power four plus one is equals to zero. Notice that I've just used the difference of two squares to break down this expression. Is that okay? okay. So once we have done that, we simplify this. What you have to see is that if I was to get the one with a positive sign, x squared, so x to the power four plus one is equals to zero. This will end up giving me, it will give us complex solutions. So because of that, this will give us something, but there will be complex solutions. So we're going to, to leave out this part uh, and only move with the other part. And the other part will be the x to the power four minus one is equals to zero. In the same way, you see that this can be written as x squared squared minus one is equals to zero. So this will also simplify to x squared minus one by difference of two squares, x squared plus one is equals to zero. Again, this one will only have complex solutions. So we cross it out or we keep it, but won't just consider it here since we're only looking for real solutions. So that we are only going to have x minus one equals to zero as the only viable continuation. And here, we know to say by difference of two squares, again, you have x minus one, x plus one is equals to zero. Finally, x is equals to one, or x is equals to negative one. And in a similar way, since we had y is equals to x to the power three, is that what we had? Uh, yes, y is equals to x to the power three there. The first critical point is already zero comma zero when x is zero, you see it here, yeah. When x is one, y will be one, meaning the second extrema is going to be one comma one. The third one is going to be one comma negative, not one, negative one comma negative one. So these are the three relative extrema. Is that okay? So in this case, we're not trying to determine whether the points are um, maxima or minima. That would be uh, another approach. You can use the second derivative test, or we can just compare the functions if the left is greater than the right. That is where we can actually complete the square. Yeah, that is that has a cross product. We can't complete the square, so we'll probably use uh, the second derivative test. But we're just trying to get the extrema points, and these will be the three extrema points for that expression. 
So with that, we can now move on to the second part.